From the Grand Canyon to the California coast, Manakshi Murti and Vishnu Viswanath documented a life of travel and natural beauty, all with a touch of whimsy. Their Instagram account, Holidays and Happily Ever Afters, had more than 10,000 followers. The couple had immigrated to Silicon Valley from India nearly three years ago. Vishnu worked in IT while his wife was waiting to qualify for a green card. And while Manakshi waited, she documented their experience in the US. The two had married in the city of Kerala in 2014, against the wishes of their families, according to an Instagram post by Manakshi. Minakshi described their Instagram account as a happy place where wishful wanderlust meets vistas of positivity. Vishnu took the photographs and Minakshi wrote the posts. The result was upbeat posts sprinkled with happy face emojis, rainbows and unicorns. Throughout, Minakshi's bright pink hair punctuated their posts. But on the 25th of October 2018, their lives came to an abrupt end during a photo trip to Yosemite National Park in California. Manakshi and Vishnu made their way to Taft Point, an outcrop that ends in a sheer cliff that plunges 2,200 meters to the valley floor below. For several days, the couple's camera, which had been set up on a tripod, stood unattended at the point. Park wardens were alerted. Five days later, their shattered bodies were found below the point. They were not the first to die at Taft Point. In 2015, Dean Potter and his partner Graham Hunt died while base jumping from the site using wingsuits. According to Chris McNamara, a pioneering American wingsuiter, a rock dropped from Taft Point will fall six seconds before impact. Taft Point is a popular if arduous climb and a favorite with photographers. But it has few safety rails and visitors can go as close to the edge as they like. Absolutely no whaling. This is kind of crazy. Minakshi was, however, aware of the risks of taking pictures in unsafe conditions. She makes several references to the dangers of posing on the literal edge. A lot of us, including yours truly, are fans of daredevil re-attempts of standing at the edge of cliffs and skyscrapers. But did you know that wind gusts can be fatal? Is our life worth just one photo? In a touch of irony, the last photo taken of Manakshi was not by Vishnu, but by another visitor to the park. Sean Matteson and his girlfriend, Drea Rose, were visitors to Taft Point on the evening of Vishnu and Manakshi's death. A few days later, Sean realized that he had unintentionally captured Manakshi in a photo he took of himself and Drea. Manakshi, he would later say, appeared to be closer to the edge than any other tourist in the area at the time. Afterwards, Sean would say he did not recollect seeing Vishnu. Minakshi posted about the wonders of discovering new places. She also acknowledged the difficulties of the couple's mobile lifestyle. She mentioned the hardships of finding an apartment in New York and then packing all the couple's boxes for the move to San Diego. Sometimes she stopped posting for months, then mentioned the dark times she had experienced, hinting at periods of depression. There are days in my life when unicorns sparkling in a rainbow glitter are dancing around me, and still I am buried in my blanket for weeks, hurting in a whirl of hopeless dark thoughts. Minakshi promoted an internet campaign with the hashtag Stop the Stigma, referring to mental illness. In another post, she mentions curved balls they were dealing with and ends with her writing, here's to hope and resilience, to finding a sliver of light when you think the darkness is never ending. None of the people who were up on TAF that evening recall seeing Vishnu. Drea gave an interview to the Daily Mail a week later. She said together with Sean, they were at TAF point on Sunday just after 5 p.m. on that fateful day. There were only a few people there that day. The three slackliners, us, the couple that passed, and a group of four people, two of which were taking wedding photos. No one saw Vishnu, however. Drea said that Manakshi was alone the entire time. Nor did Manakshi appear to be prepared for a photo opportunity. Drea also later remembered that she was without a backpack. And as the sun began to set, 
There was no one with Malakshi for the hour or so that Drea spent up at Taft Point. I never saw him, and she was alone for the whole time I remember, which was a while, because it was the whole time I was there. I'm not sure if he was off exploring or taking photos. Menakshi, meanwhile, had no expression at all, Drea said. Just looking at the view and very calm. Drea and Sean began to make their way back, and Sean turned to take one last photograph. In it, Menakshi can be seen perched on the edge of Taft Point. She appears to be balanced on the ledge below an overhang, across from one of the fissures in the cliff. This overhang has no railings. Some have speculated that her husband had already slipped and fallen into the fissure by this time, and that Menakshi was simply too shocked to seek help or act cogently. That she had no bag or backpack is also telling. As the photographer, it would be logical that Vishnu carried the gear. If they had a day bag, it would make sense for him to be carrying it. Vishnu could well have been scouting for a good position to get a dramatic photograph, then simply lost his footing. Stunned at the speed at which Vishnu literally vanished from her world, Manakshi may have sat down at the edge and waited until she was alone. People react in seemingly illogical ways when confronted with a sudden life-changing shock. In a very similar case, a Cape Town husband risked his life to follow his new bride after she tumbled from a cliff during a photo shoot. On December the 2nd this year, Newlywed Yolandi LaRue and husband Andrew stopped at Lookout Point. This is the highest peak along the scenic Chapman's Peak Drive in Cape Town. The road snakes around the Cape Peninsula and Lookout Point is a popular view spot 150 meters above the ocean. Although there is a barrier, Andrew and Yolandi climb beyond it, hoping to get a better picture. Yolandi slipped and plunged down to the rocks below. Andrew frantically began to climb down the cliff. Others at the scene immediately called rescue services. The first metro rescuer on the scene, paramedic Henry Barlow, was lowered onto the mountainside from a helicopter at 5.40 p.m. As he hung from the tether line, Henry was shocked to encounter Andrew more than halfway down the cliff. Henry told the Cape Times what happened next. It's one of the most dangerous places in the peninsula Highly experienced in these mountains, Henry struggled to find a secure footing himself as he touched down, wanting to speak to Andrew. He risked his life trying to reach his wife, but couldn't. It was heartbreaking, but it would have been suicide to go any further. It was just cliffs and a 60 meter drop to the rocks and sea below us. Bolo wanted to lift Andrew off the mountain, fearing for his safety, but Andrew declined, saying he'd find his own way back. Henry had no choice but to leave Andrew to climb up the crumbling rock face to the top. It wasn't safe and he looked like he wasn't all there, but I couldn't force him. I think he was relieved that help had arrived so that he could hand over and be by himself. Fortunately, Andrew made it to the top unscathed, but the outcome could easily have been different if he had lost his footing. As for Menakshi and Vishnu, We'll probably never know for sure what actually happened. Unless new evidence comes to light, the events that led to them going over the edge of Taft Point will have died with them.